Hi everyone. Welcome to another section of this course, Securing User Accounts. In this section, we'll cover these topics. How to set up pseudo privileges for full administrative users and for users with only certain delegated privileges. Advanced tips and tricks to use sudo. Locking down users' home directories. Enforcing strong password criteria. Setting and enforcing password and account expiration. Preventing brute force password attacks. Locking user accounts. And setting up security banners. Let's start with the first video, setting up pseudo privileges for full administrative users. In this video, we will look at how to allow a user to do everything, including logging into the root command prompt. There are a couple of methods for doing that. The first method is adding users to a predefined admin group, and second is creating an entry in the sudo policy file. The first method, which is the simplest, is to add users to a predefined administratives group, and then, if it hasn't already been done, to configure the sudo policy to allow that group to do its job. It's simple enough to do, except that different Linux distro families use different admin groups. On Unix, BSD and most Linux systems, you would add users to the wheel group. When I do the groups command on my CentOS machine, I get this. This shows that I'm a member of the wheel group. By doing sudo vi sudo, I'll open the sudo policy file. Scrolling down, we'll see the line that gives the wheel group its awesome power. The line is highlighted. The percent sign indicates that we're working with a group. The three alls mean that members of that group can perform any command, as any user, on any machine in the network on which this policy is deployed. The only slight catch is that group members will be prompted to enter their own normal user account passwords in order to perform a pseudo task. Scroll down a bit more and you'll see these lines. If we were to comment out the percent wheel line in the former snippet and remove the comment symbol from in front of the percent wheel line in this snippet, then members of the wheel group would be able to perform all of their pseudo tasks without ever having to enter any password. That's something that I really don't recommend, even for home use. In a business setting, allowing people to have passwordless pseudo privileges is a definite no-no. To add an existing user to the wheel group, use user mod with the hyphen G option. You might also want to use the hyphen A option as well, in order to prevent removing the user from other groups to which he or she belongs. For our example, let's add Maggie. Exit from here. Then enter the command sudo usermod a g wheel maggie. You can also add a user account to the wheel group as you create it. Let's do that now for Frank. Note that with my usage of user add, I'm assuming that we're working with a member of the Red Hat family, which comes with predefined default settings to create user accounts. For non Red Hat type distros that use the wheel group, you'd need to either reconfigure the default settings or use extra option switches in order to create the user's home directory and to assign the correct shell. Your command then would look something like this. Now let's start with method two, creating an entry in the sudo policy file. Okay, adding users to either the wheel group or the sudo group works great if you're either just working with a single machine or if you're deploying a sudo policy across a network that uses just one of these two admin groups. But what if you want to deploy a sudo policy across a network with a mixed group of both Red Hat and Ubuntu machines? Or what if you don't want to go around to each machine to add users to an admin group? Then just create an entry in the sudo policy file. You can either create an entry for an individual user or create a user alias. If you do sudo vi sudo on your CentOS virtual machine, you'll see a commented out example of a user alias. So type sudo vi sudo, enter the password. We get the file here. You can uncomment this line and add your own set of usernames, or you can just add a line with your own user alias. To give members of the user alias full sudo power, 
add another line that would look like this. It's also possible to add a VI sudo entry for just a single user, and you might need to do that under very special circumstances. Here is an example that will help you understand. But for ease of management, it's best to go with either a user group or a user alias. The sudo policy file is the etc sudo ers file. Always edit subdoers with the command sudo vi sudo. That's it for this video.